Hi everyone, I want to start by thanking you for your interest in this lightning talk, interrogating the power of open critical pedagogy and the talk of teaching, where I provide some food for thought at the intersections of open pedagogy and critical communication pedagogy specifically. Just some quick information about who I am. My name is Dr. Maggie Mapes. I'm a faculty member and introductory course director in the Department of Communication Studies at, as you can see, the University of Kansas. So for my research, it emerges from a critical pedagogy, cultural studies, and feminist rhetoric specifically. And my role as an introductory course director means that I oversee all of our KU public speaking or business public speaking classes. Those are general and required courses serving at about, serving around 3,000 students. But today, my short goal is really to ask that we consider how communication or the ways that we communicate about broader teaching and research structures create ideological expectations that can either prohibit or positively facilitate a more expansive understanding of open pedagogy. So what does it mean? How can we think about what we say or mundane communicative acts that throughout all of these seemingly disparate structures actually inform and may influence how open pedagogy is understood or how it's resisted? That really asks that we answer the question, what is open pedagogy? And while it's really, really expansive, you see here that I borrow from Robin and Rajiv, who talk about open pedagogy as a site of praxis or a tool to look at intersections of teaching, learning, and technology. For me, open pedagogy comes into fruition most often around open educational resources, which as many of you may know, means providing openly licensed educational materials that others can freely access, use, and even possibly edit or remix. I view open pedagogy as a means to reframe higher education from a paradigm of privatization and individualism to collaboration and community. So moving from classrooms, resources, and research as closed systems to potentially open or remixable systems. But I wonder, what makes that shift from privatized um, individual to collaborative, what makes that so difficult? And also, why does it matter? Because in my experience, when I discuss the idea of open, particularly around collaborative editing or remixing, that that suggestion is often really counterintuitive to the way that many students and colleagues have been taught to value or understand their own ideas as their own, where the dominant norms really privilege a perspective of ownership within higher education, right? I mean, how could we promote someone unless we could um, so completely track their impact, which is grounded in a belief that I own this work through that more traditional copyright perspective. And some of our most rigid disciplinary structures within higher education, including plagiarism structures, are often based within those beliefs, really, really strong grounded ideological beliefs in ownership and privatization. And this is where critical communication pedagogy for me can offer a helpful theoretical guide. And it draws from critical pedagogy, where a critical pedagogy often asks that we look at power within structures, teaching and learning structures, for example, to criticize those structures and also to imagine and explore possibilities in order to transform. In many ways, open pedagogy harnesses the spirit of critical pedagogy by engaging with or asking that we engage with ideologies within teaching, learning, and technology. So who's best served by our traditional practices and approaches and who is left out? Critical communication pedagogy really extends critical pedagogy by cementing the discussion in communication and investigating the relationship between communication, narrative, and power. So critical communication pedagogy reminds us that communication constitutes the very structures that inform our practices. So it asks, in other words, what can we learn when we look at how we talk, respond, or introduce ideas in classrooms, on campuses, or through other types of information sessions about learning, teaching, and technology? Because when we look at that talk, right, it makes sense that so many people are hesitant to open because so much of our norms, so many of our norms and beliefs in education and educational practices are based within that idea of privatization and ownership. And when we narrate best practices around teaching and research as constituted through privatized individualized frameworks, we see that, for example, in my field, we still have the expectation that you publish in, be in the best journals that are guarded through a paywall. 
that first author or singular authorship is applauded far more than a collaborative ethos, and that those expectations influence how other types of higher education resources are influenced, like, for example, educational resources or teaching resources. Because within that more privatized framework, the idea that content could be edited or adjusted by others is really outside the bounds of reality or consciousness. And that has consequences because it means that our colleagues are less likely to do open work and they're also less likely to value that work. Instead, critical communication pedagogy reminds us that language and communication about all of those disparate systems matter in the very mundane everyday way that we discuss it. Because it creates connections between these other disparate parts of higher education. So how we talk about scholarly impact can influence how an institution makes sense of open educational resources or values open educational resources. The ways that we punish or teach plagiarism creates norms and expectations for graduate student teachers about what's acceptable or unacceptable in terms of collaboration. How we discuss audience or readers frames how academics understands their commitment to access, who can access the, their, their work, who can't, and why they should care about those questions. So I know the kind of snippet of information I've suggested here might feel really theoretical, but I promise you that it's entrenched in a very praxis-based and mundane perspective. And I just invite you all to really consider how pervasive our talk about ownership is and knowledge creation and consider how that talk might create barriers to our broader commitments to open pedagogy, open educational resources, and open textbooks. Thank you all, and I really hope that I am able to see you at the um, broader social justice and open pedagogy panel.